If you're like me, you've probably wondered how computers and AI can navigate their environments and understand how to move between two points intelligently. For example, how video game AI finds its way around a level, how mapping software calculates the shortest route, or how robots know how to move around a room. One of the most popular ways to solve these problems is by calculating a path with the A-star algorithm, so I decided to check it out. The A-Star algorithm was first published in a paper in 1968 after being developed during the Shaky project, where a robot, Shaky, was required to calculate and follow a path around its environment. It has since become one of the most popular graph traversal algorithms. When provided a graph along with a node to begin from and a goal node to reach, this algorithm will calculate the minimum cost path from the start node through the graph to the goal node. It was built largely upon Dijkstra's algorithm, a greedy algorithm that works by continuously selecting the shortest outgoing edges of a given node until a goal was reached and then backtracking along these edges to compute a resultant path. However, A-Star improves in one major way. It can be significantly faster and more efficient. This is due to it being guided by a heuristic function, which in this situation is simply the best guess of the cost of the remaining path from a given node. It's this estimate that makes A-Star an informed search algorithm, typically reducing the algorithm's search space significantly, especially in larger graphs. There's a little bit more to heuristics, such as admissibility, to ensure the optimality of the algorithm, but I'll touch on that later. With this in mind, the first step is to implement the algorithm, which first means understanding it. The A-star algorithm works by progressively expanding nodes, which simply means looking at the nodes that can be reached from a given node, calculating the costs associated with reaching these neighbour nodes, and then storing them so that they can be expanded later. To do this, A-star maintains two lists of nodes, an open list which contains all the nodes that are yet to be expanded, and a closed list which contains all of the nodes that have already been expanded. Initially, we pass a node to start from and a goal node to reach. We initialize the open list with the start node as its only element and create an empty closed list and an empty final path list. During traversal, we need to ensure we know exactly how expensive each node is to reach from the start. So each node has three attributes. A path cost, which is the sum of the cost of edges from the start node to that node. A heuristic cost, which is an estimate for the minimum cost between the current node and the goal node and a cost to move to, which is how expensive the edge is from the previous node to the given node. Before we begin traversing the graph, we will set the start node to have a path cost of zero. Since we start there, the cost of reaching it is nothing. We then calculate its heuristic and add it to the open list for expansion. Now we continue to expand nodes until either the open list is empty, as there are no more nodes to expand, or the goal node has been reached. Both of these are exit conditions for the algorithm. To expand the node, we will take the node from the open list that has the lowest overall cost function, which is defined as being the sum of the path cost and the heuristic cost. Then we will expand it by checking each of its neighbours. Here we calculate each neighbour's path cost and heuristic as if we travelled to it from the current node. If the overall cost function for the neighbour is now lower than it was previously, given that if it has not been already added to the open list it will have a final cost of infinity, we update the cost to be the new lower costs and add it to the open list if it is not already there. At this point we also update the previous pointer to point to the current node so that we know which node reached the neighbour with the lowest cost. When all neighbours have been considered we can finally add the current node to the close list as it has been fully expanded. Once the goal has been reached, we can backtrack along all the previous pointers recording each visited node in the final path list. By reversing this list we will have a list of nodes to visit from the start to the goal and this will be our minimum cost path. With the operation of each subsection of code fully understood, we can model the algorithm by hand to see its overall function. With most of the groundwork already done, implementation was now rather simple. I began by designing the core of the system in UML, starting by creating a node class to hold details of each node in a graph, a pathfinding class in which I could implement A-star, and some basic heuristics for which I could utilise dependency injection to supply A-star with different heuristics at runtime. Early on during this design phase, I realised that changing the open list from an array to a priority queue would be a good idea. When maintaining the open list as an array or list object, finding the next lowest cost node has an on time complexity, 
where n is the length of the open list, as we have to check each node in the open list in a single pass. However, by implementing a priority queue, we can neaten this code by simply on-queuing and dequeuing nodes and letting the priority queue determine which node to return. Within the priority queue itself, I implemented a min-heap structure. This meant that finding the lowest cost node could be done in O1 time, as it would always be the top node of the tree, and then reordering the heap upon on-queuing or dequeuing could be done in O log n time, which is much faster than the ON solution when using an array. Now that I had ASTAR implemented, I could move on to use it in a more visual way. Since ASTAR is generally explained and represented using either a digraph or grid, the natural next step was to start by building a grid so that I had a basis to demonstrate the algorithm. I started by creating an IMAP interface. This specified that a map should be able to return a node closest to a given three-dimensional vector, as well as return a list of all nodes. I then implemented this in a grid map class, where I generated a graphical grid from a predefined 2D array of characters. I felt this was a nice way to represent the grid, as it meant that it was easy to create and also enabled easy expansion. With this grid being successfully generated, I then added the path cost, heuristic cost and final cost values on each grid square, as you can see from the example in the top left, to show how the cost of each node is updated by the end of the algorithm. Now it was time to add in an agent that would actually use the ASTAR algorithm to traverse the grid. For this I set up an abstract agent class that would handle moving the agent to the next node in the path, resetting the agent ready to traverse another path, and some other useful functions such as pausing. This class also featured two abstract methods for finding a path between two nodes to be implemented in my Agent 2D Grid class, which would be the implementation of the agent for use on a 2D grid. This was driven by a simple controller class that called the agent to find a path between the top left and bottom right grid square, which the agent would calculate using the A star algorithm and whatever heuristic was passed to it, which in this case was just Euclidean distance. The agent could now successfully find its way from the start node in the top left to the goal in the bottom right, using the shortest distance route, which on a graph with entirely equal weighted edges was, as expected, just a straight diagonal line. So far I've been using the cost of a node or edge to be a measure of distance to ensure that the path calculated is the shortest. This might not always be the desired outcome though, and it is important to state clearly that the A star algorithm is searching for a minimum cost path not necessarily the shortest distance path. It might be preferable to choose a slightly longer path that provides other benefits. For example, it might be better to travel across roads and bridges rather than water because driving would be faster than swimming, making the time to complete the path shorter even though the distance is greater. Or it might be beneficial to take a path that has more of any desired attribute, such as a more gradual incline, roads where the speed limit is higher, or a path that yields more of a valuable resource. Therefore, we can manipulate the cost function to account for not only distance, but also any other attributes we wish to minimize or maximize along our route, by increasing the cost for undesirable attributes and decreasing it for desirable ones proportional to the attributes worth. It's worth noting here that this might affect the admissibility of your chosen heuristic if you start decreasing the cost of nodes, leading you to implementing a custom one that can account for these decreases in cost. The admissibility of a heuristic relies on the fact that it is getting a minimum cost to a goal. This means that when you calculate the heuristic at a given node, the remaining cost of the potential path to the goal will be at least the value of the heuristic, but likely more than it. As the algorithm evaluates nodes, it uses this to estimate if the node is getting closer to the goal, and if the remaining path is likely to be shorter than from other nodes, ultimately determining if it gets expanded next or not. While the heuristic guesses a remaining cost that is less than or equal to the actual cost, the algorithm will know that by expanding this node, there will follow a cost of at least the value of the heuristic. If it is higher, then the path cost will increase, which will increase the final cost and prevent further expansion. However, if the cost is actually lower than the heuristic predicted, it is possible that the algorithm does not expand nodes that it should, as it will have assumed that the path they will go on to create to be of a higher final cost than it actually would be leading to suboptimal nodes being expanded first and potentially a suboptimal path being reached before an optimal one. We can see this by looking at our previous A star visualization. By using an inadmissible heuristic, the following path is calculated. Now recall that the optimal path was actually this one and the importance of the admissibility of a heuristic is immediately evident. Keeping in mind that I had to ensure my heuristics remained admissible, to show how additional costs added to certain edges can affect the final path calculated, I decided to include terrain in the grid in the form of different coloured squares. In code, these are just different characters in the grid which have different costs associated with them when the node objects are created, 
By manipulating the values of certain terrain types, I can actually show how this changes the nodes that are expanded and the final cost that is calculated. I also thought it best that to fully understand the final use of this, I give our agent a little bit of life. So I decided that perhaps in this situation, a penguin was making his way across an ice field, trying to find the shortest route back home. Let's assume that the blue squares are water, the grey squares are melting ice, and the white squares are just normal ice. When the cost of travelling across water was set to 20, melting ice to 5, and normal ice to 1, the shortest route was no longer a straight diagonal. The algorithm avoided going across the water because it resulted in a more expensive path, and instead went across the melting ice because despite its cost, the path was still cheaper than going around or swimming through the water. It can be a little bit difficult to interpret the results of the algorithm from just these numbers alone, so I decided to implement a simple gradient feature that would colour each node red to green depending on its value for path cost or heuristic. A higher value would be indicated by red and a lower value by green. Using this, it is much easier to visualise how the path cost increases through each node expanded by the algorithm and how the heuristic changes for each node too. We can also see more clearly now which nodes the algorithm does not attempt to expand as these are left with their original colourings. If we now assume that travelling across melting ice and water is slower than we previously thought and increase their cost to 25, we can now see how the path cost changes across the grid and how it is actually cheaper now for our penguin to travel around the terrain on normal ice than to attempt swimming or walking across melting ice. This visualisation was pretty interesting, but a bit basic, so I figured it would be fun to peek under the hood just a little bit more and create a slightly more in-depth visualisation, this time in 3D. So I swapped all of the 2D sprites for sphere meshes, said goodbye to our penguin friend for now, and started work. Since I'd already technically been working in 3D space, albeit with the Z component of the 3D vectors set to zero, this swap meant everything still worked as expected. However, I did create another IMAP implementation called a node map, since I was no longer necessarily working in a grid, and so storing nodes in a 2D array no longer made sense. The one feature that didn't carry over so well was the visualization tools I'd built. Understanding how each of the grid squares was connected to its neighbours in 2D was simple, but in a 3D graph where node placement could be much less uniform, it was not so simple. Initially I drew straight lines between nodes to represent the graph edges, but it was still difficult to identify the direction of these edges, and so I eventually settled on implementing coloured quadratic bezier curves, which look a lot nicer. I also added a speed slider and a heuristic drop down option in the top right, so that I could speed up the demonstration and change heuristics to view their effects. Since I wanted a slightly deeper visualisation of A-star this time, I decided I would create a pathfinding snapshot class, which would hold a deep copy of all the data that A-star used at each step of the algorithm. These snapshots would then be stored in an array so that I had an exact record of the costs of each node, the heuristic values of each node, and which nodes were in the open and closed list at every point in the algorithm. Using this data in a visualizer class, I could display the data on screen, step by step, exactly as the algorithm processed it when it calculated the path. The visualizer class was responsible for changing the color of nodes to indicate which nodes were in the open list or closed list, that is orange for nodes in the closed list and purple for those in the open list. In addition, the visualizer also displayed some white visualization lines to show the neighbors that were added to the open list or had a cost update as the current node was being expanded and some black lines which pointed in the direction of each node's back pointer. This provides an interesting map of sorts when the visualization ends, showing how the algorithm traveled through the graph. Running this on a more complex graph structure, it was now much easier to understand the process of the algorithm, and since it was now dynamic rather than handmade, it could be applied to any created graph. Now you've probably noticed that so far nodes have been placed by hand, which is less than ideal, especially for larger graphs or real world use cases. Therefore, since I was happy with the visualizer, I decided to apply the project to a more complex graph in the form of a mesh. First I wrote a script that would take the vertices of a mesh and create nodes from them. Then it would add neighbors to each node based on the triangles of the mesh, so that each node was connected in the same way that the vertices were connected. For example, take this mesh that I created in Blender, Using this graph, we can now send the agent around the mesh by clicking the node we want them to go to, and they will find their way there. This was a neat little extension to the project, and I was very happy with the project thus far, but it was missing one small thing. It didn't yet quite show the capabilities of A-Star when used behind the scenes, so to speak, when it wasn't about demonstrating or visualizing the algorithm, but instead simply utilising it for its intended purpose of finding a minimum cost path. I wanted to use the algorithm in a more real world scenario, with the visualiser being optional, so I decided to make a small game, 
This time, our little penguin friend isn't looking for his way back home, but instead, he's trying to collect all of the coins in the area with us to guide him. Since I'm certainly no modeler, I started by building a small 3D grid for him to operate on and placed our friend on it. I then added in an ocean effect to try and sell the scene a little bit more and created a short script to generate some coins for collecting. For now, I will hide all of the behind the scenes details to give a better idea of how this algorithm could be used in practice. Now what we need to do is tell him where the coins are by clicking on the node and he'll find the best way there all by himself. With all the progress made so far, I thought I would use the visualizer to experiment a little. So I added in a node inspector window to show us the values associated with each node that we hover over, and started testing out the different heuristics. Interestingly, if we try to traverse this graph using the no heuristic option, which simply returns a value of zero for any heuristic calculation, we essentially remove the heuristic from the algorithm, and the result is identical to Dijkstra's algorithm. Now we can see just how big of an improvement A star's heuristics make on the speed of the search by how many extra expansions are avoided through their usage. Another intriguing thing I found was that whilst Euclidean distance and Manhattan distance both return equally valid and optimal paths of the same length, they do sometimes produce different paths. Using my node inspector, I believe this is due to the fact that they will calculate different heuristic values for the same node, which could cause nodes to be expanded in different orders and consequently the goal could be reached via an alternate path. Lastly, I thought I'd demonstrate again how the algorithm handles us manipulating the cost function, but this time with the visualizer. Here I've included some blue ice, which is super slippery, so our penguin friend would have to walk slower on it or risk injury. Therefore, I've added an additional cost to these nodes. If we ask the penguin to reach the opposite side, the shortest distance would be to travel across the blue ice, but the lowest cost path should be to travel around the blue ice. So let's see what the penguin does. Once again, we can observe that the algorithm avoids the more expensive nodes where possible to minimize the final cost of the resulting path, just as we expected. So there we have it, the A-star algorithm. There's still plenty more to discover about this algorithm as well as other pathfinding algorithms such as jump point search, D-star and LPA-star, and I can still see a few obvious improvements to this project such as generating a nav mesh to reduce memory consumption and increase the speed of finding paths on larger meshes. So I'd like to revisit this project in the future to expand on it. But for now, I'm happy with the outcome, so thanks for watching. Thank you.